Hello, prospective AP Chinese students. Is AP Chinese right for you? And I will also go over a brief overview of AP Chinese. So why should you take AP Chinese? So Chinese is the second most used language in the entire world after English, of course. So many companies require their employees to have proficiency in Chinese for its business interactions. The Chinese market is one of the largest in the world and is still expanding today, giving those who can communicate successfully in a cultural context a significant advantage over their peers. Last but not least, college credits. Of course, this depends on which college you want to enroll for. So, the prerequisites. Um, you, you should have a solid foundation in Chinese, either you're a heritage speaker, that means you grew up in a family that speaks Chinese, or you studied Chinese uh, for at least a few years, preferably in a classroom setting. So you should also know some knowledge of Chinese culture, traditions, and customs beforehand, because the AP Chinese uh, exam is, uh, is about Chinese culture as well as linguistics. So, you should also have some speaking and presentational skills, which will be very important for the speaking section of the free response. The cost of the AP Chinese exam is $96. Uh, your school may charge an additional uh, administration fee. So, some statistics about the AP Chinese test. So, roughly 60% of the students got 5 on the test in 2019. Uh, in 2021, it was around 57%. So it's usually around 60% for people who take the uh, AP Chinese exam. This is one of the highest rates out of any exam, but you should keep in mind that the vast majority of participants are heritage speakers. Those who, did not, who are not heritage speakers usually found the test a bit harder. So AP Chinese is the third most popular linguistic AP exam out of the eight that College Board offers. The first is Spanish and the second is French. So an overview. The AP Chinese exam is approximately 12, two hours and 15 minutes long. There will be a break in between like roughly 10 minutes. The test is completely online. This is one of the few AP tests, if not the only, that is completely online. So how will you be able to write and express your Chinese skills? So it uses the Microsoft Ping system for simplified Chinese uh, and the Microsoft New Phonetic IME for the traditional Chinese. An AP grade of 5 is between the scores 90 to 120, uh, 4 is between 80 to 89, and 3 is between 56 and 79. So it's divided into two sections. The first is the multiple choice questions, which are which consists of listening, uh, which has rejoinders and listening selections, and um, the other component is reading comprehension. Free response questions consists of writing, uh, basically the story narration and email response, and speaking, conversation, and cultural presentation. Do note that um, the vast majority of students found the free response questions harder. So the three key points of the AP Chinese test is for you to express your interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational skills of your knowledge of the Chinese language and culture. So an important note, AP Chinese is not a course that you can cram into one or two months right before the exam, like for example, AP Chemistry. So mastery over a language is all about exposure. The more of it you get, the better. You want to consume media, interact with those who know the language, etc. It is highly recommended that you enroll in the high school AP course. Uh, the reason for this is that you'll get 250 extra hours of exposure, excluding the homework. And your teacher can help point out mistakes that you make for the free response parts and uh, make you a better student as a whole. So let's first go over the first section, which is multiple choice. It consists of listening and reading, each respectively 25% uh, of the score. So first up is the listening rejoinders. It's 10 to 15 questions, 10 minutes, 12 points, and you have to select the most suitable ending for a conversation that is played. So you want to practice for this by consuming Chinese media, like anything. You can watch a news broadcast, maybe watch a Chinese drama, as long as you're consuming Chinese media and you're understanding how people within the Chinese language interact with each other. This is all about your interpersonal skills. So the next is the listening selections. 
five, which is 15 to 20 questions. It's 10 minutes, 18 points. Select the correct answer to a question after listening to a passage. Now, the same thing, you want to practice this by consuming Chinese media. Do note, however, that um, you need to pay very close attention and, if possible, take notes. They'll give you scratch paper. Um, yeah. Next is the reading. So this is the longest section of the exam. It's worth 30 points. It's an hour long and it's usually 30 to 40 questions. You want to answer multiple questions after reading one passage. So the passage can be a wide variety of things. It can be an email, a poster, a sign, a story, part of an article, brochure, or an advertisement. Do be aware that um, some signs re require you to have a, a cultural understanding. For example, um, some traffic signs. So also, if you don't know a word, that's usually fine. You can use context clues to make it up. To, to the right is an example of a letter. And um, question number 13, you, the question is in English, and you want to answer it. So there are usually multiple questions for each uh, passage. You would, okay, you should be able to finish reading uh, ahead of time. Uh, 60 minutes is pretty generous for 30 questions. So, second section is free response questions, which consists of writing and speaking, each respectively 25% of the grade. So, first is a writing story narration. It's 18 points, 15 minutes. Once again, you input words using the Microsoft Ping system. The advantage of this is that you don't have to memorize all of the Chinese letters. I know Chinese is a very complicated language with a ton of characters. Because it's pinging, all you have to know is the phonetics of letter, and you just have to be able to recognize it. So, for example, uh, you see the example on the right. When you first encounter a problem, you want to spend one or two minutes process processing the image, planning out how you're going to write it. Next, you want to write it for 12 minutes and spend the remainder of the time editing. Editing is very important because grammar and spelling mistakes will cost you quite a bit of points. This tests your writing skills and your use of aspects for the Chinese language, such as idiom. So for this, you want to do as many practice problems as needed until sufficient. And um, since it's a language, you want to have the opinion of a skilled um, speaker and writer. The next is the writing uh, email response. So it's 12 points, 15 minutes. So once again, if you see the example on the right, you want... Uh, to uh, read it in one to two minutes, formulate the response in 12 minutes, and spend two minutes editing. Same reason, because mistakes will cost you. So this tests on both your writing skills and your knowledge of proper cultural conventions. For example, um, did you include a proper greeting uh, in your letter, uh, in your email response, and um, did you show respect to your elders? Something like that. So to practice, do practice problems and learn about Chinese interpersonal exchanges. Do know that for writing, fluency and structure is very, very important. Next is the speaking part. So first is the conversation. It's 12 points, 4 minutes, which is 20 seconds per question. There's six questions, which are all related to the same conversation or scenario. This tests your interpersonal speaking skills, and it is recommended that you time your answer between 15 to 18 seconds. Now, this seems easy, but most students actually find this to be the hardest part of the test. Um, you have to be able to eliminate your stuttering and your filler words, and you have to be able to quickly come up with a precise answer. An example is that you're being interviewed for a job in China, and you wish to explain why you wish to work in China, and there's five other related questions. Next is a cultural presentation. So this is 18 points. It's six minutes. You spend four minutes preparing to give you a scratch a piece of scratch paper. You can write on it, and two minutes presenting. You have to have a very solid grasp on Chinese culture and tradition. Um, only write down the key points of your speech within a lot of time. Do not write down your entire speech. First of all, there's probably not enough time. Second of all, when you're reading it out loud, it makes you sound like a robot. Just write down the key points, and then uh, for the rest of it, make up with your memory. That's Of course, it's uh, expected that you have adequate knowledge of the topics. The topics are pretty random, so you want to cast your net as far and wide as possible. Read Chinese books, um, watch videos on Chinese culture and history, and stuff like that. So make sure to state the significance of the topic. This is very important. That's like half of um, what is uh, expected. So an example is to choose one traditional Chinese holiday. 
then it can be Lantern Festival, Dragon Boat Festival, Moon Festival, Chinese New Year. In your answer, describe this traditional holiday and explain its significance. So some recommended resources are Barron's AP Chinese Language and, Cult uh, Language and Culture Test Prep. This is um, a very good resource in terms of practice questions and uh, an overview of the Chinese tests. Next is the resources provided by College Board, such as the past questions on AP Central. And lastly, I think this is probably the most important part, is someone who is excellent at Chinese. Um, they can uh, review your work and give you pointers, especially on the free response part. Well, thank you for listening. Um, uh, if you have any more questions, you can either visit our website or email us at inovusacademy at gmail.com. This presentation template was created by SlidesGo.